Um, at this point, uh, I'm feeling remarkably great. Uh, I still have some lingering issues uh, secondary to uh, possibly COVID toes, which I think I started to experience a couple of days after being discharged. Yeah, uh, the coronavirus, amongst other things, tends to stimulate the clotting factors. Uh, you've probably heard that kids are experience some uh, form of Kawasaki syndrome, so they get it in their fingertips and their hands. Adults and, and some younger folks actually get those small clots stuck in the smallest uh, portions of their body, which is the capillaries, and that would be toes in the bottom of the feet. actually contracted what I thought were the symptoms. Uh, I, like most folks uh, out in the country, in the world for that matter, uh, I was very concerned. But uh, it was one day at, at, at the end of March, March 26th, 27th, I came home from work and I just uh, fell, uh, collapsed into my bed and I couldn't get out for the next couple of days. Um, my wife figured out within a day or two that I probably had the, the COVID virus. Well, actually, um, the documenting didn't really start till Frank was admitted to the hospital. Um, Basically, I started the journal more of, because we had Frank on many, many prayer chains and friends and family uh, were just inquiring daily on his health condition. And I knew that I was not going to be able to remember all this because the doctors were very detailed with me in regards to his treatment, medications, um, especially once he went on the ventilator, just everything that was going on. And I needed to be able to reciprocate that information. And so for me, that was the easiest way to do it was just to start writing this journal, which I didn't know was going to turn out to be, you know, what it is now um, and has got um, just so much information and detailed information. But I'm so thankful that I kept it because um, that's really the only way that Frank was able to understand what he was dealing with and going through during his time in the hospital. <laughs> Um, well, uh, while I was on the ventilator, uh, I don't know if you're referring to, to when, when I, sometime during the course of being on the ventilator, I had actually woken up because they were switching uh, sedatives. Uh, the first one tended to, uh, they try not to keep patients on it for more than three days, propofol, I believe it's called, and because it tends to be very addicting. So in the process of switching me over, uh, I, I apparently tried uh, taking out the, uh, the, the tubes out of, out of my mouth, and, and at the same time, they were clogged. So they were able to clear out my lungs uh, with uh, shooting normal saline in there and cleaning things up. And so when, when I was actually lucid, the, the one thing I can remember is waking up and hearing the ventilator breathing for me. For me. I mean, it sounded like Darth Vader from Star Wars. Uh, and I could look out the window and then I tried moving and I re realized I couldn't move and I looked down at my hands I couldn't even move my pinky so at that point uh, I realized I was awake on the ventilator couldn't move but right away I heard somebody say hey, he's awake and then they uh, they must have uh, the, the sedative must have kicked in back then uh, at that point because I, I don't remember anything beyond that sure uh, I, I think when people think about hallucinations, they, they think of uh, psychedelic dreams or disjointed thoughts. But for me, I, I felt it was just like I'm having a conversation with you or with anyone else. It, it, it seemed very, very real. Uh, I, I had, uh, uh, at the time, I believed I was not in a hospital room, but in a 
a, ho a plain hospital that, uh, in fact, the doctors were flying me over to another country to seek um, experimental uh, treatment. And then at, at, at one point, uh, I think I had fallen out of favor with the doctor, so uh, the nurses and one of the doctors were, were pl plotting to kill me. I had, uh, I had, in fact, I'd been kidnapped and taken down to Mexico, and uh, I was, I was uh, being hunted by uh, um, uh, Mexican cartel, Mexican police. I had a Texas Ranger after me. I had drummed up murder charges. I had a Nigerian hit squad at me. I had a black ops team. And, you know, it, it all seemed very real. And, uh, in fact, there was even uh, high-tech high -tech ways of going after me. And, and uh, in fact, uh, there was points where there was uh, times where I was in my uh, in my uh, hospital bed, this is maybe a day or so after I was off the ventilator, but I could see things uh, and the only way I could go after them was to try to break break them apart with my hands. And meanwhile, the nurses, I'm sure, are looking at this patient, myself in the room, and see the patient swat, you know, swinging his arms in the room, and I'm sure they were just shaking their head. Thank you. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate you uh, taking interest in our story. Yes. Thank you.